Now on the show, we're going to take a look at the big Marvel film that is out in cinemas right now. The Marvels, of course, which is uh, a sequel, in a way, to Captain Marvel and also Miss Marvel, um, which, of course, was the Disney Plus uh, television series that came onto the scene a couple of years ago now. Now, what happens in this movie is that Captain Marvel, Brie Larson, and Miss Marvel, um, Aman Valani, are brought together when Dar Ben, played by Zawi Ashton, causes mayhem when she begins a journey of trying to repair her broken planet by destroying others. Her use of a magical bracelet soon finds Captain Marvel, Miss Marvel, and Monica Rainbow, played by Tiona Paris, jumping between time and place and basically confusing all three of them. With the disturbances in the universe becoming more and more violent, Nick Fury, Samuel L. Jackson, with the help of the very cute Firkin, Goose, orders the three to work together to fix what is happening. The resulting adventure is not only a shock for Kamala, Miss Marvel, but also for her mother, played by Zenobia Sharoff, her father, played by Mohan Kapoor, and her father, played by Sagar Shahik, who must watch her place her life in danger while they are right there going along for the ride. Now, Lee, what did you think of the Marvels? Because I know you weren't exactly a big fan of Captain Marvel, the film. No, I mean, it was entertaining enough, but it just wasn't um, a Marvel movie that I went away thinking, I love this and I want to rewatch it. Um, however... I found the Marvels to be fun and entertaining. I thought there was a lot more characterization um, and the storyline was a lot better um, than the Captain Marvel movie. I thought Brie Larson brought a lot more depth to the character in this film. Um, I also liked the I liked Kamala joining the team in this. Um, that was fun to watch. That character was really fun to watch. Um, and just watching her following her superhero idol, which was Captain Marvel, um, to meeting her and being starstruck um, by her and then working with her to save the universe. Um, I think she brought quirkiness and comedy into the film, but also growth of the actual character um, as an actress, Valen Villani came across as more confident and I felt like she had grown in her action scenes. Um, and yeah, there was growth from, I guess, the TV series to making this film. You could actually see a difference in um, in the growth of, of her as an actress and I really enjoyed that. I thought the character of Mani Batu brought a warmth and a motherly role really to the screen. Um I really enjoyed um, when the characters um, connected and entangled um, and were able to switch places. Um, I thought that brought a lot of fun to the screen um, and, of course, using it to save the universe. Um, one of the scenes that I loved most, and it is not a surprise for anyone who knows that I love cats, was the Flurkins, who are, of course, aliens that look like adorable cats. Um, but have octopus-like tentacles that are hidden and can spring out of their mouths. Um, and they also lay eggs. But I don't want to give away too much in the scene, but I, I felt it was a really creative way that they used the flurkins to, um, to help a situation. Um, and... Yeah, it was it was fun. It was creative. It was I had some friends sitting next to me who were also cat people and you know, you could hear the audience doing the ah ah no, oh that's so cute. Oh no, like those sorts of sounds um as those scenes came. I would say definitely watch the end credits if you are a mm. Marvel movie lover. Um and if you know your Marvel movies, um, there will be um, a clue to what's coming that it could be very exciting in the Marvel future. Yeah, there's two um, mid credit scenes. One indicates something that's going to be happening um, 
in the future around Kamala. I guess we can say that because it's, she's in the movie. Yes. Um, the other brings back an an old Don't favorite. Give it away. No, an old favorite from the Marvel universe. And all I will say is it is a pre phase one old favorite. So yeah, take that one on board and and make do make whatever you want from that. But yeah, it's a pre phase one um, favorite. Now, for me, what I liked about this film was it felt like what's been a bit of a problem with phase four so far of these Marvel films has been that for me, they've lost their characterization and they've lost the, the deep themes that some of the first films um, had in them. I feel that they came back in this film. There's a really gifted screenwriting team who worked with director Nia DaCosta um, on this film. And, and once again, we see some really deep things touched on here. So there's one theme that's explored about what it's like to be a countryless refugee. Mm-hmm. Um, with that story there, also, we see Kamala growing as a superhero because she's suddenly faced with the dilemma that a superhero can't always save everybody. They have to make choices um, sometimes along the way, which is um, which is kind of sad, but... It, it's something that she needs to learn um, so that she can be like Spider-Man, Iron Man, all them have, who have been through that. Um, the other really emotional storyline that comes in here is the storyline revolving around Carol, uh, Captain Marvel, and Monica. Mm. Um, Monica once saw Carol as her aunt, as Carol made a promise to her dying mother that she would always be there for her daughter. But now the adult Monica is furious for Carol not being there for her. Something that Carol can't comprehend because she feels that she's been off saving the world. Mm -hmm. So that should give her some credit. But for Monica as a little girl, it just meant that her aunt Carol wasn't around. So um, I kind of liked that they went back and touched on... um, on, on things like that, because that's something I think has been missing from Phase 4. Um, having said that, except Spider-Man, I think those themes have been well and truly explored in the Tom Holland Spider-Mans. There's been some pretty deep themes there, including, spoiler, if tune out for a second if you haven't watched the last Spider-Man, but it's something that we're going to see in the Spider-Man universe now that nobody remembers him, even MJ, so... Um, which I do have a question now. I guess I can ask it here, like because I asked it to some friends the other night. If that spell that Doctor Strange did on at the end of the last Spider Man made everybody on Earth forget who Spider Man was, does that mean that Captain Marvel will remember? who Spider-Man is because she wasn't on Earth at that time. Exactly. You have to remember that um, some superheroes, there's a number of superheroes that may not have been on Earth at the time. Nick Fury wasn't. Neither Mm. were the Guardians or Thor. Yes. So So, there are superheroes out there that may may remember. Yeah. Um, I think, too, with um, the character of Carol, um, there was also a storyline of um, guilt and redemption. Yeah. Um, and yeah, that comes through too. I won't go too much into that, but um, I really quite liked to see that storyline within the Marvels. Yeah, it's a, and I guess that's also going to be something that Kamala is has learnt from this film as well. Is that um, it's not easy being a superhero. Mm. She's kind of always glorified the superhero lifestyle, but now she's learning that it can be um, pretty tough. And also watching her family watch their daughter slash sister go through what she goes through in this film is pretty intense um, as well. So I I really like that they've brought back that side to Marvel. There is, for those that do like the the fun kind of stuff that they've been doing with the Thor storyline, there is one little element in this film when... There's a musical number that happens as well. And I get the feeling that is going to be one of those scenes that's either really hated or really loved by Marvel fans. So that wasn't 
my favourite scene, I have to say, and I'm a very no, musical type of person. But having but, said that, yes. that scene now makes um, Carol a Disney princess. It does. So, so you will have to watch that. Yeah, so I guess to sum up, Lee, what are you going to give uh, the Marvels out of five and why? I'm going to give it three out of five. It was entertaining. I like the storylines. Um, yeah, I was captured, you know, the whole movie that I was watching it, the whole time I was watching it, um, and actually, actually redeemed for me the Captain Marvel movie, which I wasn't as into, but now I can say I do enjoy the Marvels. Yeah, so I'm going to give this four out of five. I really like the how the writers here are being able to mix comedy, action, and drama together really well. I love the fact that they overcome a big issue about Captain Marvel in that she's almost indestructible. Um, if you remember back to, to Endgame and all of those, she they probably wouldn't have been able to have defeated Thanos without her. Um, and But that also causes a problem because then how do you make a movie and make it believable that she's in danger when you want to raise the suspense? And I think they do that really, really well um, in this film. So um, I'm going to give it four out of five. I also thought that this film kind of captured that same feeling. If people have asked me what kind of feeling does this movie have, to me it reminded me a lot of the underrated Green Lantern film from the DC Universe. Um, with the way that it treated its space travel and stuff like that. So I'm going to give it four out of five. And you... Three and a half. So three and a half out of five from Lee. Four out of five um, for me. Um, go out and see it. The Marvels uh, is in most cinemas at the moment, but check your local cinema guide to see where it is showing near you.